Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Becoming Regenerative. And, and thank you so much, uh, Bella, Lena, and Asako, for that wonderful film that gave us a lot to think about. And it was specifically made uh, for today's event. So I'm very happy for, for all the work and the creative work you've done. So this is the first ever public-facing event of uh, the, the Becoming Regenerative Research Group at Central St. Martins. It's a great pleasure to have all of you here. So this group was really set up in the first place to explore how regenerative ideas grow into tangible regenerative products and services and transformations. So that's the simple mission of the group and we aim to, to keep going for about seven to eight years. Um, the group is a synergistic space of multiple different inquiries. Uh, typically student run and sometimes staff get to contribute a little bit of their research as well. Uh, today I will start by explaining our vision in brief and then I will set out three propositions which will hopefully help frame our panel. Uh, we have four uh, remarkable panelists joining us today and I think that will be uh, one of the most fruitful parts uh, of, the, of the whole afternoon. Um, so that will happen but at this point let me also thank uh, Samsung King's Cross, this innovation hub, for generously hosting us here uh, today. Uh, let me thank uh, Central St. Martins for funding our pilot study uh, on which we built uh, today. And let me thank uh, the whole group, uh, Becoming Regenerative Group at Central St. Martins. Uh, your work has made this event possible. And I would love to thank my, all of my colleagues and also my uh, line managers, uh, Richie and Rebecca, for being so supportive of this work. And finally, um, um, let me thank Lillian Weyerman for the beautiful slides that you'll be seeing uh, today. So yes, let me go into the vision, uh, the propositions, and then the panel will start. And after all that, we will have uh, time for networking. And we obviously want you to engage with this work going forward. We want to keep going for many years. Uh, we want you to talk to us and sign up for the mailing list if possible. Um, so there's a lot that we can we can do together. Um, let me get rid of this piece of paper. So um, yeah, one year ago when we were kind of uh, germinating as a uh, research group at Central St. Martins, we um, kind of started looking at designer entrepreneurs and companies that were learning how to create with and for nature. And we, um, at the outset, we kind of discovered three things. First thing is that Mushrooms are in. Mushrooms are really central to this field, and if there was one symbol, I think it would have to be a mushroom uh, for this field. Uh, the second thing was that it wasn't all that difficult to find interesting examples, um, interesting designs, interesting innovations, uh, interesting companies um, all around us. Obviously, being at Central St. Martins, it was particularly um, easy, perhaps, but also in London, these examples now abound. Uh, but the third thing we realized was that even though it might feel like these, um, um, let's say, regenerative startups and, and uh, designs and designers are proliferating and there's a new one every day, it's not at all the case that uh, the innovations that they produce are created overnight. No, it takes a long time, uh, often many years um, of, of hard work and R&D to actually uh, get to where they want to go and to, to bring about regenerative transformations. So that's what um, became our focus, kind of the journey, uh, the journey of regenerative uh, innovations. Now, if we take one example, um, uh, let's fast forward a little bit here. Cool. Um, so um, if you take the case of Jen Keen, so she's one of the designers we have met during the past year uh, during our pilot study. Um, she used to be a designer at Adidas and then came to uh, Central St. Martins around 2014 or so. And um, she asked this very interesting question because she was ex exploring how to make fashion more sustainable, how to use different materials and all that. So she asked this very interesting question of, instead of sourcing our materials externally and, and cutting and stitching them into the shape we want, why don't we grow them directly into the into the garment we want, or into the shoe we want, perhaps. Um, so as a result of that question, she came up with this idea of microbial 
weaving, working together with uh, microbes uh, to grow nanocellulose. And, and that's one of the examples emanating from her work and the work of her company, which is called Modern Synthesis. So that was kind of the beginning of her idea journey or her creative journey. And of course, there are many, many episodes and, and uh, parts of that journey where she built a team, a very cross-functional team, um, with uh, expertise in, in uh, uh, science and biology and, and business and so on. And uh, they developed their pitch so that they learned to persuade uh, more mainstream investors as well. And now they're at a point where they, they can really grow and, and scale uh, their technology. So it hasn't been an overnight success uh, to get to this point. Uh, the kind of microbial weaving process and technology that they have. It's taken uh, at least six or seven years. And I think um, it's fair to say that for companies, um, many other companies like Bull Threads uh, in the US and Biome here in the uh, UK, as I'm sure Samantha will tell us uh, about, uh, they've also taken a very long time to develop their products. And um, it's really that period of time, in a way, from the idea to the kind of realization of the potential of that company that we want to look at. And that is the space for becoming regenerative. So that's what we want to explore. And, and because we feel that there's often so much focus paid on the, uh, the products and the designs, the visuals, and all of that is obviously important and inspiring. But we want to bring a lot more focus on the, on the process itself. Uh, we believe that for today's organizations, uh, one of the key questions they need to ask is not just what is regeneration, what are the principles of re regeneration, it is rather how to become regenerative as fast as possible. And that's why I want to really try to start a discussion today with the panel as well on, 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 on that question where we're more conscious about process and more conscious about the real world journey the hardship, the challenges of, of really getting there, rather than just focusing on um, the uh, products. So um, it would be, I think, fine to say that a lot of these startups and, and companies, designers that are mentioned, uh, they are all informed by these regenerative principles that uh, I talked about, but it's really the journey that gets us there. Um, and it's really this, this process of emergence and becoming, that's very important. So I think that's uh, the main part of our vision uh, there. Um, there's a couple of uh, side notes, definitional side notes. Uh, this may be more interesting to the uh, academics among you. And then afterwards, I'll just set out the three propositions that I uh, mentioned. So I also have a background in entrepreneurship studies. And it's often said that one thing entrepreneurs need to get good at is, um, is with um, sort of finding value where other people cannot detect that value yet. Um, they have to see patterns that others don't see, and they have to find potential for uh, profit as well in many cases, or social value. Um, so in a somewhat analogous way, you could say that when you're in this field of regeneration, your job is to actualize regenerative potentials going well beyond the paradigm of the, the sort of um, conventional paradigm of sustainability. So you may be working with living beings, with e ecosystems. You're trying to imagine what could be there when you work uh, we, from this regenerative perspective. Here is more of a research definition that we use in this recent working paper. Uh, and this tries to very uh, uh, briefly explain what regenerative creativity is about. You can go to that paper if you're interested in reading more. But uh, what's more, more helpful than this I think is, is the mapping done here, where we try to open up this space a bit more. It's an emerging space. It's sometimes a little bit difficult to, to get across, to, to really put into words. But, but uh, in brief, we are mostly interested in um, designers and in projects and in startups that are kind of at the intersection of those three. So um, we're looking for cases in this research. Um, we're looking to engage with, with cases where uh, this evidence of creating with nature could be with uh, microbes or uh, mycelium or other um, living beings and ecosystems. And we also want to find evidence of creating for nature, that there's a sense of actualizing potentials that will enhance living systems. Uh, and finally, we are looking for 
uh, people and cases and projects where uh, whole systems thinking is being implemented. So this is, uh, in my mind, this is in opposition to a very narrow product-centric uh, view, because that's quite common in, in the startup world, for instance, that you have to be laser focused on one product instead of the system. But in the regenerative world, uh, we need to focus on helping living systems flourish and to really focus on their interconnections. Uh, so uh, moving on, um, here's a little snapshot of the research vision and in some ways the process. So we want to um, gather data, uh, focusing on co-creation, and that's kind of the more traditional academic part, empirical part there. Uh, then we want to kind of tease out challenges. We believe that there are many shared challenges across different industries. So we're not just focused on fashion or architecture. We're interested in every uh, sector where there are regenerative initiatives, and we believe that they will share certain, um, certain challenges in common. Uh, we also want to curate community, uh, as we are uh, doing today. So we want to bring different audiences together to make sure that the questions and the ideas keep flowing regularly. And then hopefully through all this work, we will help organizations, also more mainstream organizations, to transition to this era of, of uh, regeneration. So that's how we try to have impact, obviously working very collectively in, in most cases. And here's a little snapshot of that community that we are, we are trying to curate. So we're learning from the pioneers in many ways, uh, working with researchers and graduates, media partners, and, and then really trying to also work with uh, mainstream organizations and the innovation managers within those organizations to help shift their mindsets and practices. So on to the propositions. Um, proposition one, and these emanate from the research we've done um, over the past year, and they will inform the research going forward, but I hope they will also provide us uh, with some food for thought today. Um, so we have found that um, when um, designers and entrepreneurs work in this field, they actualize these regenerative potentials um, by working with various knowers of nature. So this includes, yes, scientists, experts, but also indigenous thinkers, so people who are familiar with uh, particular living systems and, and, and organisms and, and, so, and, let's say, chemistry, principles of chemistry and all that. Um, but the good news is that if you are looking to go into this field, you don't need to be a biologist uh, or, or a chemist yourself. You can work with diverse teams, and that's exactly what the leading companies are doing. They're building very interesting uh, uh, mixed um, teams with, with a balanced um, sort of balance of expertise in, in business and design and science. That's for me, that's one of the most interesting uh, parts about this field. And arguably, you kind of need that um, assortment of uh, <clears throat> people to be able to perceive uh, regenerative opportunities out there um, in the world. And um, so the second proposition is that designers really excel at exploiting familiar forms, uh, as we've just seen, sneakers, for instance, uh, while pursuing regenerative revolutions. So this is very intriguing uh, for me at an intellectual level as well. You keep something the same, so you're basically uh, making sure that there's a sense of familiarity, but there's also novelty and there's transformation. Um, some of you may have read about optimal distinctiveness in management uh, and organization theory, which is the idea that um, in order to be successful, new ideas and new companies need to be a little bit new, but they also need to be quite familiar. So they have to kind of hit that sweet spot, because if they're too new, people will reject them. People will not find that they're legitimate or, or credible. So they have to kind of hit that sweet spot, and we wonder how this uh, functions in the world of regenerative design and innovation. So we plan to uh, explore further. The third proposition, and this one is the most uh, compelling one for me personally, is that we learn to become regenerative not only through high-level principles and the textbooks or even events like this, <coughs> but through creating, through relating. So this is really um, empathy in active form where you're uh, working with um, uh, living organisms that are very different from uh, human beings, uh, but they still think, they still, uh, they, they move, they respond to the environment, They're, they have uh, many 
attributes uh, that you can comprehend, and you have to exercise your empathy, your imagination to kind of build bridges with that organism. And we often heard during our interviews, our first series of interviews, that um, uh, you know, a designer would say that I started to think about what the organism wants, you know, how it behaves, and and how I should uh, you know work with it. And it became a collaborative exercise. So this is really about moving from a kind of old style innovation and design to something that is very non-exploitative and that is kind of very decolonialized um, because you are, um, you know, you, you're working as, as equals, as collaborators there. And I think this is a theme that we will probably come back to in the panel. Um, and speaking of which, we're almost there. I wanted to just say that uh, for these reasons, believe, we believe that if you and if uh, organizations around the world engage in regenerative creativity, that will really, really transform the way that they approach innovation. Um, and, and we don't fully understand yet uh, how all these related mechanisms work. We don't know, we have sort of perfect answers for how to promote uh, regenerative innovation, but we have some ingredients that we, we, we'd love to start with here and um, yeah we'd love for you to engage with this project it's kind of early days still things are very open and we were very welcoming so please speak to us after the event sign up for the uh, mailing list we've got a QR code on the final slide so so please make a note of that uh, 